sometimes battle with this and this is a big hurdle for Christians Joseph was sold into slavery he became a slave of a pagan this really messes with our theology I think that way too many Christians have misunderstood our Lord's words when Jesus declared no one can serve two masters remember in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24 no one can serve two masters and because they take Jesus words out of context they misapply them they shut off an avenue to see their dreams realized and then afterwards they cry they say well God didn't show me the, the interpretation of my dreams but they've not humbled their hearts to the process of the dream to the move Joseph could have turned around and said no said, no I can't serve two masters I've got a heavenly master and that's all God himself coordinated it this way that Joseph would be subject to the rule of an earthly master for a season and and look at what happens Joseph submitted himself to that process and because Joseph submitted himself to the process God started unveiling many of the significant truths to Joseph but look he did it in step by step in phase by phase Paul makes an observation about submitting and being subject to earthly masters he says bond servants obey in everything those who are your earthly masters not only by way of eye service as people pleasers but with sincerity of the heart fearing the Lord Colossians 3 22 fearing the Lord from sincerity of heart bond servants now bond servant was a slave a servant uh, in the house and 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 the term normally came from one that served a, a foreigner maybe a, a Jew who became a servant in the house of a Roman in those days bond servant and listen what it says do it with sincerity don't only do it when they're looking around but from the heart serve them you know God has got a word for many of those that bear his name and I've got a rebuke for some of you you are terrible employees you're terrible you give your boss trouble you stamp your independence you cut and kick against his authority that is not of God the Bible says from the heart now God will put masters and earthly masters over us to deal with our prideful hearts there may be a boss in a situation you say well he's not a Christian why should I submit to him because Joseph submitted to Potiphar because Paul tells us in Colossians 3 22 well I think I'm called to the ministry I shouldn't be doing this kind of work well that's all well and done but if you're called to the ministry be faithful where God has planted you and God will open the door sometimes an earthly master is not a person sometimes it is a circumstance to which we just need to humble ourselves and say well Lord have your way instead of changing the circumstance change my heart show me Lord God what it is that you require of me through this situation in fact Lord don't change the circumstance until I found it until I found what I need from this circumstance until something in this situation until uh, until something about that person changes something in me the reason why you find yourself working in that job for that boss is because for some reason God needed to place a truly free person there you see an earthly master is not your true master they may think that they have true authority whereas you as a child of God being put into that position you are the one with the true authority now you go in there and you honor them as being boss you go in there and you honor them you work with diligence you work with respect from your heart but in the meantime you're taking authority over the spiritual realm you're binding you're loosing you're setting free you're having prayer meetings in the canteens you, you, you you're, 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 you're gathering people in the staff you're being an evangelist where God has put you there's a reason why God has placed you where he has placed you 
We may think that Jesus would have obliterated any form of servitude placed upon the members of his church. After all, he said, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. John 8, 36. But not so. But not so. On the contrary, Jesus extended the metaphor when he said, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant or slave of all. Mark chapter 9, 35. Now we obviously use a great deal of wisdom and being a slave of all doesn't mean that you're being a doormat of all. No, not at all. No. It just means that you acknowledge God's sovereignty in placing you and positioning you under the authority of an earthly master. You do this so that your earthly master and your service to your earthly master is actually not service to him at all. Your service to your earthly master is actually service to your heavenly father. And in so doing, earthly service becomes heavenly worship. Heavenly worship. The Bible says, Paul says, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23 and 24. He said, whatever you do, work at it. What is it? Where's the heart condition? Work at it heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. And he goes on to say, you are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Never forget, no matter where you are, when you clock in in the morning, you're serving the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't only worship God on, in church on a Sunday morning. Every aspect of your life is worship to God. When you're doing those books, you make sure that the integrity and sincerity, that is worship unto God. When you make those phone calls, when you have those meetings, everything is worship unto your God. There, there, there's far more to God's reasoning than just placing us under the authority of difficult people or difficult circumstances. There's something very precious in that place or on that path, in that workplace, in that relationship. There's something very precious there. And that something is necessary for you to unlock the next level of your dream odyssey. Be faithful there. Some people never go any further than that level because they don't understand that, 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 that in order to go further, they need to be faithful where they are. Now, if you are faithful, and I mean truly faithful from the heart, like what Paul says, heartily faithful, then without fail, and listen to my promise, listen to the guarantee of scripture listen to the guarantee from the life experience of joseph if you are faithful if you excel where god has planted you then without fail god will send another move your way he will now he sent when you first got the dream he sent a move to put you where you are right now if you're faithful then the moves will keep coming if you get out of that experience what god wanted you to get out of that experience if you have proved faithful to god another move is going to come your way now it may be a move in your perspective maybe there's nothing wrong with your circumstances maybe the change needs to happen in you so there may be a move in your perspective there may be a move of your boss or that difficult work colleague yeah God may just move you. So somewhere along the line, a move will come if you are faithful from the heart. And as I said, being a servant does not mean that you're a doormat. God may have put you under the authority of a boss, a difficult boss, but don't forget that boss himself is also under authority. He's under the authority of the work ethos of that workplace. He may, he may be under the authority of of some other supervisor or manager as well he's also under authority he also needs needs to give account ultimately everybody is under authority of the law of this land and so god would not permit or allow and nor are you to permit or allow anybody to use your service to them to do anything that is unlawful to do anything that is immoral anything that is against the law no in fact god may have placed you in that place so that you can bring correction but you do so under
the parameters that have been provided, whether by the ethos of the workplace or whether by the law of the land. Joseph, we're told, excelled to such a degree under the authority of Potiphar. The Bible says that he became a successful man. What? Have you ever heard of a successful slave? Well, the Bible tells us about one here. Some of you are trying to find your success in independence and you'll never do it. Joseph became a successful man working as a slave under Potiphar. Now, in due time, Potiphar himself noticed that there was something very different about this slave that he had, Joseph. This slave was not like all the others. You notice? The same thing that caused Joseph to be rejected by his brothers, the sense of being different, has now caused the right person at the right place at the right time to pay attention to Joseph for that difference. The same thing that has caused you to be rejected by others will be the very same thing that connects you with the purpose of your dream. And in due time, Potiphar noticed this. And the Bible records that the first thing that Potiphar noticed about Joseph was that the Lord was with him. That's what God promised right in the beginning. He says, the Lord, I will be with you. And Potiphar, get this, a pagan man, a man who served other gods, noticed that the one true living God was with Joseph. Already where Joseph was planted, Joseph's overseer had become more sensitive to the workings of the one true living God. I believe that the Holy Spirit started working on the heart of Potiphar. I believe that where God plants you, the reason why God has planted you there is so that you could be a, 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 a vessel to carry the Holy Spirit into that area. I, I, I believe that there may be some hardened bosses or work colleagues that are going to start noticing the Lord upon you. Now some will reject you for it, but I want to promise you the good news, praise God. Some will come to salvation because of it. Wouldn't that be a wonderful victory for you if that difficult person that person that used to persecute you comes to humbly submit to the one true living God because of the love, the concern, the dedication, and the faithfulness that you have shown. Potiphar made another observation about Joseph though. It says that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. Pagan man noticed that everything that Joseph touched, everything that he put his hands to, was succeeding. Now there may be seasons in your life where the exact opposite is going on in your life. You say, but God, I've tried this and it just failed. Oh Lord, I tried that and it just failed. Oh God, I, I, just, keep to seem, I, I just seem to keep bumping my head. I'm so exhausted, Lord. I've tried everything. Everything I touch just fails, Lord. It's, it's not about the things that you touch. It's not even about you. It's about your position. God had positioned Joseph. And because Joseph was faithful in the position where God had positioned him, everything that was put into his hand succeeded. Here's the good news. When the move relocates you, the place that it relocates you to, you're going to find the exact opposite. It's just going to seem like everything you touch is going to bear life. It's going to come to life and bear fruit. And, and people are going to pay attention to the success because of the things that you touch. The dream that God placed in Joseph's heart was now beginning to have an effect on Joseph's hands. The dream that God has placed in your heart will have an effect on your hands. You will be positioned. The Apostle Peter makes a comment on, on this very principle. He, he says to the church, he says, Humble yourselves, therefore. Now listen, you, you only have to humble yourself to a situation or circumstance that you don't agree with, right? Right? If, it's, if it accords with your comfort, if it makes you happy, you don't have to humble yourself. You just go with it. Right? But if something is difficult, Peter says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the 
proper time, he may exalt you. 1 Peter 5 verse 6. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time, he might exalt you. So if you are faithful and you say, well, Lord, I, I don't agree with it. But yet again, I don't have to submit to things that I agree with. So I only have to submit to things I don't agree with. So I, I don't agree with it, Lord, because I don't see it. I've dreamed it, but I don't see it yet. That part of the dream still needs to unfold. But God, I trust you. I trust that you're my shepherd. And wherever you've, and wherever you've led me, my Lord, I will go and I will go faithfully. So I submit to it. And, and here's my prayer, Lord God. Don't remove me from the situation until that situation has had its work in me. But here's my prayer. Oh, give me the grace. Give me to have a heart after you like David did. So that when I do humble myself in that situation, that I can excel. That I can excel where you have planted me. That I can come to a place, Lord God, where everything I touch succeeds for your glory. Oh, my Lord. And oh, my God. Oh, yes, Lord. I'm excited. I am excited. The Bible says, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. Remember we said, we, Jesus said that in Mark chapter 9 and 35. If you would be first. So firstly, the Bible doesn't say that it's wrong to want to be first. It's good to want to be first. As long as what you want to be first in accords with the glory and the purpose of God. For example, Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verse 10, he said, outdo one another in showing honor. In other words, you've got to have a, a, a desire to outdo. You've got to have a desire to come first in showing honor to somebody else. So if somebody in your church uh, has been good to you, if somebody in your church has been kind, you know what you want to do? Don't just be a receiver all the time. Take it to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, this person has been loving. This person has been kind. How can I outdo this person? And go bless them. Go bless them. Outdo one another in showing honor. Oh boy, wouldn't that revolutionize our churches? If we could just take that one command from Paul, that one instruction that he gave us, if we could take that seriously and we could become a church of outdoers, that we outdo one another in showing honor. Wouldn't that revolutionize our church? Wouldn't it revolutionize our church leadership structures as well? Outdo one another in showing honor. See, all that the young Joseph, now I'm going back to the young dreamer, when he first had his dream, 17 years old, all that that young, uninitiated Joseph could see in the dream. And I'm sure that he delighted in emphasizing the point to his brothers. But all that he could see was how his bundle of grain stood so tall and high and mighty and upright in the middle of all the other bundles of his brothers. I'm sure that he had a smug look and a smile on his face when he was describing to his brothers how one day they would bow before him. And, and, and you know what? Joseph just didn't know when to put a lid on it. He didn't stop there. Then he went even further and he, he spoke about the, how the sun and the moon, that's his father and mother, even his father and mother, and the 11 stars, his brothers, would bow before him one day. See, the dreamer had the dream, but he now needed to go through the process. He now needed to go, because that young, uninitiated, arrogant Joseph would never ever be reconciled to the fulfillment of the dream while his heart was still in that condition. It took the pit to change his heart. It, it may take the pit to change your heart. It took Potiphar and a, 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 an experience of slavery to change his heart. It, it may take a worldly master and, and a time of servitude to change your heart. Embrace it. Don't kick against it. Don't let your arrogance be greater than your desire to see the dream fulfilled. Embrace what God, embrace the process that God puts in place for you to fulfill and, and, and receive the fulfillment of that dream. You see, when Jesus was talking about leadership, he said the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them 
and their great ones exercise authority over them. You know, that just that sense of, hmm. And then Jesus goes on to say, he says, it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came, not to be served, but to serve. Matthew 20, 25 to 28. So in conclusion, I, I want to leave you who wish to be a dreamer of dreams and a, a seer of visions. I, I want to leave you with a question. To what end do you want to dream dreams? To what end do you want to see visions? Is it so that you can serve God's people? Is it so that you can become a slave to all of God's people? Or is it so that you can stand and have the sheaves of others and the sun, the moon, and the stars bow towards you? If it's that, then let me just tell you that that's not the Spirit of Christ. And, and, and listen, it's, it's, it's not that it's a hopeless situation. That's where most people start off. In fact, I would go as far as saying all of us start off with that heart condition of Joseph. It's a sense of elevation. Well, I, I would like people to know my gift of being a dreamer. Well, maybe I can write the books. Maybe I can get popular and go and talk and speak all over the place. Maybe I can, I can, I can. Oh, dreamer of dreams, seer of visions, rather first become a servant. For if the Son of Man, that's your Jesus, came not to be served, don't have a desire to be served. Don't have a desire to have people bow before you. No. Have a heart to serve them. Have a heart to minister to them. Have a heart to bring Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior to them. Have a heart to bind up the broken hearted. Oh, you who wish to be a dreamer of dreams, become a servant. God bless you and keep you and encourage you on this path of dreams. Amen.